is right here. So I want to thank everybody for coming. We've been doing this for 17 months, which is hard to believe. I know several of you. How many people have been to every single Gals That Give? How many people have been to almost everyone? There's a lot. How many people have won something, Katrina says? Ooh. That's cool. How many people are new to Gals That Give? know the five of us we got together we said let's do a fun event and we started um, 17 events ago so it's a little over a year and a half right late 2013. yep so late 2013 and then we went strong in 2014 and then we've been um, running with it in 2015 so it's been awesome in those 17 events we've raised seventy six thousand four hundred thirty five dollars with all of you which is awesome so the cool thing about Gals That Give, which I think a lot of people don't realize, is that all the money we raise stays in Kent County, which I think is a big deal. Um, many of you are involved in charities and other organizations, and I see you out and about, and a lot of the money centers in Newcastle County. So it's really impressive that the money stays here and impacts our neighbors, our family, and our friends. So thank you very much for coming. Um, tonight. So before we kick off and talk about the Brain Injury Association of Delaware, we have some folks here to speak about the cause. I wanted to just thank Cynthia. There she is, Cynthia Pruitt. So Cynthia is our uh, super sponsor and her law firm is Dorshaw Pasquale. I'm going to butcher this. Let's do it. How do you say it? That is impressive right there. So if anybody can say that three times in a row, you're going to win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Cynthia. Cynthia is involved with the Brain Injury Association. As soon as we talked about throwing an event, she immediately jumped up and was like, let me sponsor the event. So thank you very much to your firm. Um, they have eight offices in Delaware, including downstairs, just in case you want to step by to say hello. So we thank you very much for um, your sponsorship. So without, yeah. Without further ado, let's have Jason, who's the director of VIAD, come up and talk a little bit about the organization. And after that, Katrina's going to talk a little bit about our fun photo contest. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, first off, I am incredibly intimidated. <laughs> Wow, I did not expect this many people to be here. You're the third male speaker we've ever had. Is that right? Third. Do I get an award? You might. Let's see how it goes. There we go. All right, I better do good, huh? 200. Whoa, sorry. Yeah, I 250 women. Holy cow, that is so impressive. I'm just blown away by the amount of support that we're already getting. Thank you so much. Now, as she said, uh, my name is Jason Carpenter. I am the executive director of the Brain Injury Association of Delaware. Um, now, another note, I did notice that you guys are having some kind of selfie contest going on. If you guys want me in that picture, Aaron, Aaron I'm going to need a step stool. Um, I'm a little on the short side and I, I don't really like that too much. But uh, anyways, thank you, that's fine. Um, so to get back on topic, all right, we are the Brain Injury Association of Delaware. We do serve the entire state of Delaware. Um, and I can tell you that our mission is to create a better future for survivors and caregivers and the family uh, through education, advocacy, support, and prevention. Uh, when we talk about each one of those pillars, you know, we talk about advocacy. We're always down at Legislative Hall trying to push through uh, bills. Uh, the most recent one that, that's going to be signed during the state fair is the ATV bill that requires individuals under 18 to wear a helmet. Thank you. Um, also for education, every year we do have an annual conference in uh, March uh, where we do educate individuals, uh, you know, survivors, caregivers, uh, also professionals to get their CEUs uh, and we just, you know, we educate the general community about brain injuries. Um, for prevention, we actually have a 5K every Labor Day. Uh, it's called Brain Strong. And, um, Thank you. <laughs> it, it, we have a lot of participa participation for that. And all the proceeds that come from that event 
actually get distributed out to other smaller organizations to purchase some preventative equipment like helmets for children. And uh, support groups is our largest um, uh, program that we have. We have seven support groups throughout the state of Delaware and also including uh, Salisbury. Uh, we have individuals who have, um, you know, needs uh, and, and essentially all they want to do is talk to other individuals who are in the same situation as them. Uh, the number one thing that we want to tell these individuals is they are not alone. You know, there are other people who are having the same struggles every single day. They may not even know about it, but those support groups create those connections. We have awesome guest speakers. We had Tracy Lamon at our AI DuPont support group talking about art. She does a fabulous job with painting. And those individuals, you know, we, we kind of expected people to kind of drift off because attention span isn't there. They were so engaged in her and they were so happy that she came in. You know, those are the kinds of support groups that we need and that's the one, those are the programs that, you know, funding like this helps support so we can have those things, so we can have these conferences, so we can have the advocacy funding to go and make these bills, you know, happen, actually. Now, other than, you know, what our organization does, you know, the individuals of those organizations have their stories. You know, we have our intern who has a fabulous story. I mean, it's very close to what I'm about to tell you about, which is my story. Um, and, uh, it's going to be difficult with all these people in here. <laughs> I have to tell you, in 99, I was in high school, and I was an honorary little freshman. Uh, my brother was also in high school with me. He was a sophomore. I was in lacrosse, and he was in baseball. Um, there was one March, I can't really exactly remember what day it was, um, where my fabulous and beautiful girlfriend at the time, who I'm married to, right over there, <laughs> convinced me to... Uh, <laughs> convinced me to skip practice, so shame on you. But um, the, the, the thing is, is that, you know, my sister picked up my brother from his baseball practice, and he ran in, he threw down his stuff, and he said, all right, we're going to Wendy's. And I said, cool, man, do that. So they went ahead, they rode down the road, and, you know, being March, it was exceptionally cold. They hit black ice, his car spun out, and he took a T-bone directly onto his side, and he, he took the entire impact. <clears throat> I'm not supposed to be getting choked up this early. Um, I don't know how I got there, but an hour later I was in the ED. I could hear my sister screaming. It was pain in her voice, and it was guilt in her voice. I saw in the bay next to her some feet, and they were white. There were nurses and doctors running in there, trying to resusc uh, resuscitate my brother. Eventually he was flown up to a... Um, not AI Duke Pump, but Christiana Hospital, and he was in a coma. Every day, my family would go up and visit him. My schedule was wake up, go to school, go with my family up there, come back home and sleep in my bed, wake up, go to school, go up to my brother, come back home in my bed, wake up, go to school, visit my brother, and come back home. When all I really wanted was for him to wake up him to go to school, him to come home to my family, and for him to go to, and sleep in his bed. I wanted him to wake up, to go to school, come back to our family. I wanted Anthony to wake up and go to school. And I just wanted Anthony to wake up. It was 35 days, and it felt like an eternity. He woke up. But we were told that the Anthony we knew was dead. The guy who took me to the playground, the guy who protected me, and the guy who I looked up to was dead. And we had a new Anthony who had to learn how to walk, who had to learn how to talk. The only thing you really knew how to do was a weird code that we had, and it was just like some squealing noise. It was, that's it. He was at Christ, uh, AI DuPont for six years in inpatient care. After that, he went up there for a year and a half for outpatient rehab rehabilitation. And, <clears throat> and after that, his insurance ran out. 
and he was stuck at home. It took us eight years to find the Brain Injury Association of Delaware, and when we did, we hit it hard. I joined up, I, I volunteered, I got him in it, he went to the support groups every month, every single month, and he got better. He started communicating, he came out of his shell. It made a difference in his life. <clears throat> Ever since then, I've been completely committed to this organization. I've sacrificed everything, just for someone like him, and for other people just like him. He was lucky. There's a lot of people who get those brain injuries and don't survive. <clears throat> now, to bring it back, I just wanted to know how many individuals in here have family members with brain injuries, if you could just raise your hand. Now, how many individuals here know of somebody, an acquaintance, doesn't have to be a close friend with a brain injury? A brain injury can range from anything from a sports-related concussion to a stroke or a traumatic car accident. How many people in here, if you're comfortable, can admit to having a brain injury of any type? The point is it could be standing right in front of you and you wouldn't even know it. But it all depends on the support that an individual gets for them to come through and make a difference in other people's lives. That's why our organization is so important. And that's why we have to have these fundraisers to help fund and move forward and reach out to other individuals. <clears throat> our organization has about 10 board members and we have one part-time employee and you're looking at them. We're trying and we're trying to make that difference. So I wanted to thank the gals that give very much for all the effort that they put in to make this happen because it is going to make a difference and I want to thank each and every one of you sitting out there for coming today and just blowing my mind and our board's mind because it is just absolutely amazing. Thank you so much and you all enjoy your evening. That's incredible. There's no words. So thank you very much. I know that we talked a lot before this event and you said this would be very difficult for me. So thank you very much for getting up and sharing your story. And you know, like we said before, mm -hmm. I, I think it's what really makes a difference at Gals That Give. Yes, we get together. Yes, we have cocktails. Yes, we have a good time. But it really is the learning of organizations and sort of the education piece that I think makes the real difference in our community. So thank you very much, Jason. Let's have Katrina to the mic and talk about our fun contest. Next month, I'm going to talk about the fun contest before the testimony. <laughs> it's really tough. Jason, thank you for talking to us. It was great. And I think that what Kim said, you know, awareness is a really big deal um, with what we do. And I just want to say that, of course, you know, I love social media and all of you. I know I've seen your names liking our posts. And that makes a big difference. So everything you share, you know, I think what, um, we sent, he sent me a lot of um, quotes, testimonials, and we sh you guys shared them, and thank you for that. Because I think that with brain injury, it's a very unexpected thing. It's not something that's planned or obviously no, no struggles planned. But I think it's really important to know the programs that they have out there. So definitely check them out. Um, so how many of you guys have used a hashtag before? Let's, let's do the raising hand thing. Hashtag. Who hashtags? It doesn't matter if you hashtag a full sentence or two letters. It doesn't matter. A run-on sentence. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Yeah. So whatever. Whatever you're feeling. Whatever you're feeling. All right. So it sounds like you guys know what hashtag is. So there is directions. There are directions on your, um, on your tables. And it pretty much says, grab a prop, yep, take a shot, it can be a selfie, it can be a group shot, it can be anything. Um, you might win champagne, and we're going to switch over the, all right ladies, I lost you, I lost you. Take a sip, listen to me while you drink your wine, I'll be done in 30 seconds. Oh, take a shot, you can take a shot of wine too. 
So, and then you hashtag it. So you hashtag gals, the number four charity on social media, so Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. If you have like privacy settings and you need to uh, send it to me, jot this number down, 302-233-3974. Just text it to me. That's my number. Oh, she can't. I don't have the want, Jenny number, she didn't want to but it. it's pretty cool. So anyway, so text it to me and I'll uh, put it up on the, uh, you'll see your pictures up there. And if you don't know the hashtag, just come see me. I'll help you out. See you. Is that good? All right. And you get to win champagne, your whole table. Champagne. Everybody loves champagne. Oh. 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 That we would hit 2,000 fans on Facebook. I was like, maybe we'll do it. Well, I think we're like 20, 25 or something. So we totally just flew by it. So I'm going to try to think about a name. Is that Elisa Gardner here? Is that you? She has been awesome this, this month. So you guys get some champagne. Thank you. See, I do pay attention to your name. So the moral to this story is if you don't like us on Facebook, Katrina really, really wants you to. If you don't follow us on Twitter, you really, really need to. Immediately. She also has a selfie stick for you. If you want to use it, you can. I see your nephew. Um, so really quickly, before we do dinner, I know many people still want to do tickets. Feel free to move around, do the auction stuff. We're not going to start it yet. Duncan Center staff will come around and dismiss you for dinner. And then once everyone's seated, we'll go ahead and get started with the auction pulls. Um, if you've not made your way to the bar, it's that way. Props are up there. 50-50 is right there. Auction tickets are right here. You heard what the money goes towards. We appreciate your generosity. Thanks. I need 20.